If you have been considering a career as an Ohio real estate agent, now might be the perfect time to take action. This year, the great state of Ohio actually made the Realtor.com list of the top 20 hot real estate markets in the entire country. All the inventory shortages from 2020 actually carried its way over into 2021, making this a very competitive, hot real estate market. Working as a real estate agent comes with many different advantages. And agents that set out on their quest to get their Ohio real estate license are oftentimes looking for a business that can offer them more of a flexible schedule and also offer them a business without an income cap. So in real estate, there's no ceiling on the amount of money that you can earn. If you put the work in, you're able to earn a really great income and the sky's the limit. If you're tired of being stuck in an unrewarding job that you just don't enjoy getting up in the morning and going to, now might be the perfect time to chase your dreams get your real estate license, and start a business that might change your financial future. So if you think you have what it takes to work in one of the hottest real estate markets in the entire country, let's dive into some of the steps that will get you your Ohio real estate license. The very first step is actually choosing your school and signing up for the classes. So get ready for some classroom time. To become a real estate agent in Ohio, you must first complete your state's mandatory educational requirements. In total, you'll have to attend about 120 hours of state approved courses to be able to get through your pre-licensing requirements. I know this sounds like a lot. First, you're gonna complete your principles and practices course. That's gonna take about 40 hours of classroom time. Next, you're gonna take a real estate law course and that's gonna take another 40 hours of classroom time. Then you have a 20 hour real estate finance course and finally, you take another 20-hour real estate appraisal course. So I remember sitting in my pre-licensed classes and a lot of the content was like learning an entirely new different language. If you're not familiar with real estate or you've never really dealt with real estate, th these classes are really gonna open your eyes to a lot of different things and a lot of new things that you can actually use out in the field. However, some things you'll never end up using, but you do need to know this material and you do need to know the content to be able to pass your test. Pay close attention because a lot of the things that you're gonna learn in these classes are gonna help you avoid getting into legal trouble once you're actually licensed and out in the field practicing real estate. Next, you're gonna to have to find your brokerage. In the state of Ohio, you have to actually have a broker sponsor before you can even submit your application to take the real estate exam. We suggest that you interview with multiple different brokers before you decide which brokerage you want to work at. Starting with the right broker in this business can make all the difference between success and failure. So how do you actually choose the right brokerage? Selecting a broker is a choice that we all have to make when we first start out our real estate career and it's a big decision. But as a new agent, you might actually not know what questions to be asking and what key things to be looking for in your new potential broker partner. As an experienced agent that's worked with multiple brokerages, finally finding the perfect brokerage and staying there for over six years, I'm gonna go over some different things that you should be asking. The first thing I would ask is training. What kind of training is this broker actually going to offer you? So one of the biggest complaints I hear from new agents is they actually sign on with a brokerage because they offer a high split, but oftentimes they have poor mentorship or sometimes even worse, they have no mentorship at all. When interviewing brokers, it's important to ask what kind of mentorship program they have in place for new real estate agents. If they do have a mentorship program in place, make sure you dig deeper and find out how that mentorship program actually works. Some questions to ask is what are the expectations for the real estate agent in that program? And then what are the expectations for the mentor that's gonna be mentoring you in that program? You need to find out how much support and training they're actually going to provide you. The next thing to talk about, and this is one of the most common things to talk about when you're interviewing with a broker, is splits. Every single brokerage offers a different compensation model for new real estate agents, and this is definitely something important to consider. However, don't make this your main focus. I see so many new agents that just get licensed decide to go with a certain brokerage because of the commission split that they offered them. This can be a huge mistake. Focus on what kind of value that that broker is actually giving you for the commission split. The harsh truth is 100% of nothing is still nothing. And 87% of real estate agents fail out of the business within the first year because they didn't get the proper training and proper support. So 
Don't focus so much on the split and focus more on what you're getting for that split. It's all about value. The next thing is to find out what kind of ongoing monthly fees you're gonna have. Some brokerages charge a monthly fee to be a part of their company. This is definitely something to consider as a new agent if you have a small savings account. As an agent, it's important to be able to save and stretch your dollar as far as possible until you get some closings under your belt. Joining a company with high monthly fees can simply put a big dent in your savings account before you even have a chance to get started and make some sales. Next is commission cap. This is kind of in the same boat to me as real estate splits. As a new agent, this should not be your main focus. You should be focused on training, but it's definitely something to ask and consider if you plan on growing with this brokerage. Every single brokerage in every single market is different, but on average, you're looking at between fourteen dollars and $21,000 based on our research and the average commission cap. This basically means once you pay into your brokerage that amount of money, you get a commission cap and you don't have to pay into that brokerage anymore. You might just have to pay a franchise royalty fee or depending on how your broker is set up, you might have to pay a transaction coordination fee. Once you find a brokerage, it's time to complete your Ohio real estate sales license application. So you're gonna have to submit your application, but before you can actually submit that application, you're gonna have to provide proof that you completed your 120 hours of classroom time. This can be as easy as just sending them your course completion certificate. The application itself is only four pages long and it's fairly simple to complete. It requires you fill out some basic information about yourself and then answer some questions about your personal legal history. You'll also need your new broker's signature and your agency's file number. As of now, the state charges about $81 for the application fee, which must be processed with your application. Next, it's time to actually complete your background check. Within 10 days of submitting your application, you must complete and pass your Ohio State background check. You will also need to have your fingerprints taken by web check. The prices for a background check in the state of Ohio can vary depending on which location you actually use. On average, expect to pay between $50 and $80 to get this done. You'll also need to bring your ID. Call ahead of time and see what forms of identification that they're currently accepting. Next, it's finally time to actually schedule your real estate exam. In Ohio, you actually take your real estate exam with PSI exams. This test is taken by computer at the testing center and it's multiple choice. Keep in mind, this is not an open book test, so you're gonna need to study and study hard. All your tests must be scheduled at least one day in advance. What is the actual best way to study for your real estate exam? So the truth is in Ohio, the state test has a pretty high failure rate and most people actually pass the test the second time they take it. The bad news is, is if you fail your exam and you wanna retake it, you're gonna have to pay the test fee again. So to increase the chances of passing your test, we actually recommend Prep Agent. This is a study tool that gave me and many other agents the ability to pass their test and feel confident and comfortable in doing so. Prep Agent is basically a tool that allows you to go online, log in, and study the test virtually through your computer and practice taking the exam over and over again. And then what it also does is if you answer the question wrong, it will actually tell you what the right answer is and then why you selected the wrong answer so that you learn through actually doing it. So this gives students a much higher chance of passing the test. And because Prep Agent is so confident in their tool and their study aid, they actually, as of now, offer a 100% refund guarantee if you use the Prep Agent tool and actually fail your real estate exam. So we are currently affiliated with Prep Agent. We highly recommend them. And if you want to check that out, there's an affiliate link below. So what do you actually bring to the exam on test day? So don't actually show up to the testing center and just get turned down and turned out the door. So here are a couple different things that you need to bring. The first thing is two forms of identification. Things that could work for this identification are things like your driver's license, a passport, a US social security card, a green card, a credit card with a signature, or even a debit card with a signature. Also, don't forget to bring a calculator for the math portion of the test. With real estate exams, you're required to bring a non-scientific calculator. This is just so you can do basic math calculations and get through the math portion of the exam. How long will you actually have to complete this exam in the state of Ohio? So if you're taking the salesperson exam, you have about 120 minutes for the national portion and 60 minutes for the state portion. In total, you have about 180 minutes to complete the exam. So you'll have plenty of time and many people even finish the exam early. So don't stress, in total, you have three hours. So you wanna find out if you passed or failed. 
how long is it going to take until you actually find this out? Taking the exam was nerve wracking and I wanted to know right away if I passed or failed. The good news is, in the state of Ohio, you're going to find out right away if you passed or failed. So as soon as you exit the exam, they're going to tally everything up and say, hey, you passed or hey, you failed. So all that anticipation won't be too long. So on average, by the time you get done with your pre-licensing courses and go through the entire thing of finding a broker, I would expect on average to take about three months to actually get your Ohio real estate license. In Ohio, as of now, we estimate that on average, it's going to cost you between $1,300 and $1,500 to go through all your educational requirements, get your background check, and actually take and complete your exam. The good news is once you actually get your Ohio real estate license, you can apply for reciprocal real estate licenses in eight other states. Here are some of the states that you can apply for your reciprocal license. Arkansas, Connecticut, Kentucky, Mississippi, Nebraska, Oklahoma, West Virginia, and Wyoming. Becoming a real estate agent in Ohio is a great goal to have. And to make it all happen, you're gonna need a little bit of consistency and some hard work. But if you love the idea of selling homes in Dayton, Columbus, or any other city in Ohio, it's all worth the effort and hard work to make your dreams become a reality. So study hard and do not quit even if you fail the exam the first time around. Many of the greatest real estate agents in my market that I know failed the real estate exam the first time that they tried. So don't be let down if you fail, don't be discouraged if you fail, and certainly don't quit if you fail because you might have what it takes to make a massively successful career and build a massively successful business in real estate. And if you let that all up simply because you failed the first time, it can be a huge loss of potential. So get after it, work hard, study hard, and I hope this little guide has helped you and making the next step towards your dream of becoming an Ohio real estate agent. So if you like this little guide, definitely smash the like button. It helps the channel a lot with the algorithm. And if you like this kind of content and you plan on growing and building a real estate business, definitely subscribe to the channel because I drop content every single week. And essentially, it's all content that's geared to help you grow your real estate business and help you get to the next level. So once you get your license, I'm hoping this channel will become very valuable to you. And good luck with your license. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. I would love to help.